Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are going to look at a bunch of different compliance programs that Google is meeting, not the most exhaustive list, but the most popular, and these will be the most popular with other cloud service providers, uh, and they're good to know, okay? So we'll work our way through here. Uh, the first here we have is the ISO and IEC, uh, or IEC. Uh, these are commonly used together because one is international standards for software, and the other one is like when you're using physical uh uh, or physical devices like hardware, okay? So we have control implementation guidance, enhanced focus on cloud security, protection of personal data in the cloud. Uh, so we're talking about uh, personally identifiable information, privacy information management system framework. So outlines controls and processes to manage data privacy and protect uh, uh, PII. I know CTOs, they're always going for the 27001, but the numbers are there to uh, useful to remember. So 27001, 27017, 27018. Uh, 27701, and I do actually have these memorized because that's how frequently they come up. Uh, we have uh, Systems and Organization Control, SOC, and there's three layers of SOC, SOC 1, SOC 2, SOC 3. So SOC 1, 18 standard and uh, standards and report on the effectiveness of internal controls at a service organization relevant to clients' internal uh, control over their financial reporting. I'm not hearing people going after SOC 1, but they're always going for SOC 2. Evaluates internal controls, policies, procedures that directly relate to security of a system at an organization. SOC 3, a, a report based on trust service criteria that can be freely distributed. Yeah, here, 2701 a, a bunch and SOC 2 a bunch, okay? Uh, PCI DSS, so payment card industry data security standard, a set of security standards designed to ensure all companies that accept, process, store, and transmit credit card information maintain a secure environment. You got um, FIPS, so Federal Information Processing Standard 140-2, so U.S. and Canadian government standard that specifies the security requirements for cryptographic modules to protect sensitive information. This one's one you're going to want to remember uh, when you're using um, a, a cloud service provider that stores cryptographic keys. They're going to be FIPS 142. Uh, and it's either going to be um, for multi-tenant or single-tenant. I think uh, if you're doing like Cloud HSM, which is a single-tenant, it's going to have FIPS 140-3, okay, um, which is better. It's it's more more strong, okay. We got the Personal Health Information Protection Act, so PHIPA. I'm in Ontario, so this one's pretty relevant to me, but it's just an example of one that's outside the standard uh, HIPAA one, okay? We have HIPAA, so Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. This is a US federal law that regulates patient-protected health information. We have CSA, so this is an independent third-party assessment of a cloud provider security posture. Uh, we have uh, FedRAMP, so Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. We spent more time with this earlier on in the course. So U.S. government standardized approach to security authorizations for cloud service offerings. So how the government works with the cloud. Criminal Justice uh, Information Services, so uh, CJIS, any U.S. state or uh, local agency that wants to access FBI's CJIS databases required to adhere to the CJIS security policy. Then we have the General Data Protections Regulation, uh, GDPR. So a European privacy law imposes new rules on gov companies, governments, agencies, nonprofits, other organizations that offer goods, secure services to people in the European Union, union or collect and analyze data tied to the uh, EU residents. You want to know GDPR, you want to know FedRAMP, okay? So there you go.